Hi, my name is Dyrus from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion guide to Olaf Top. Olaf is good in lane versus many, many champions, but the ones and champions that he can't really handle in lane really vary from spellcasters to certain melees that gank him a lot. A good example would be Olaf is commonly good against Aurelia, but against good Aurelia players, it's very hard to abuse them on the correct power spikes. Also against range, if you miss your Q, you're pretty much screwed when it comes to chasing down range targets. But if you do catch them, you generally can kill them. The biggest counters to Olaf is people that are way too tanky and are able to survive his burst and do sustained damage. The most common example would be Rise late game. In solo queue, you want to dominate your lane as much as possible and translate that to the rest of the map by either split pushing or just roaming around looking for people to kill with your ghosts and ult. When you're ahead as Olaf, it's really, really hard to stop you because you have your ult, which just allows you to run wherever you want. For laning on Olaf, this is his most important thing. So when you're laning, you need to know when to all in. When you hit power spikes in level 2, 3, or 4, regardless of when you hit them, you need to conserve your mana for when the, either the jungler comes or if you're just killing them on your own. If you don't have mana, you won't have the ability to kill your enemies. The only exception to this is when you have flask or if you have sheen. When you don't have mana, your other skills still don't really cost mana, but your main source of damage is undertow. When you use your Q to chase after opponents, it's really hard to manage the mana when it comes to um, running around to certain places to either pick up the axe or deciding to throw it again. Also, you can use it for wave clear, so mana is a very, very important thing. So when you're laning and you buy after your first base, you be sure to buy one or two mana potions if you're deciding to be really, really aggressive. And if not, just calculate your all-ins and you should be fine as Olaf. For team fights on Olaf, you generally always want to have Ghost up when it comes to team fights. You can either rush down the back line and coordinate with your teammates to dive, or you can just go on the tanks and then peel back after chasing their back. Lane control on Olaf is a very, very big thing. When you're pushing your advantage and you already have the first tower, it's really important to stand in certain brushes and buy pink wards. Because when the enemies walk up to farm the wave, you can just show up out of the brush like a Garen and just chase them down with either Ghost or whatever items you have. If that isn't working, just continue to farm and look for opportunities to kill your opponent and push your advantage. For ruins on Olaf, you want to go armor pen reds, flat armor yellows, flat MR blues, and then you can change them to flat CDR blues if you're against all AD. And then for Quince, you want to go Armor Pen Quince. The reasoning for this is Olaf does a ton of damage to Squishies and it goes really well with his Q. When you press R on Olaf, he gains attack, so it goes really well with the attack also when you're just charging the back line. For Masteries on Olaf, I like to go 21 9. For skill ward on Olaf, you always want to max Q first because it gives you the most wave clear and it gives you the most sustained damage. You do have an option of maxing E second for lane, but generally people are going to be able to play around it and it's not so good against most matchups. But if you are against something like Poppy or anything that's melee, maxing E will give you the lane power to dominate your opponents. For item build on Olaf, you have the option of either going Flask or Doran's Blade. It all depends on whether you do a camp or give a leash to your jungler. Core items on Olaf vary from either tank items or damage items. As damage items, you have the option of either going Blade of the Rune King, Hydra, Brutalizer into Yomus, or even Triforce. The most common tank items would be Righteous Glory, where it synergizes well with your ult and ghost when running down an opponent. Randuins, where it slows down your opponent and gives you a ton of armor, or even Spirit Facade or Banshees. The very, very last tank core of Olaf would be Thornmail, where the enemies can't really kill you and you just do a ton of damage when you're full build. But before that, if you decide to go split pushing instead, Hydra and Bork are the ideal things to build.
Thanks for watching my basic champion guide on Olaf. Be sure to check out more guides at lowclass.com. Whereas sometimes Meganar is actually bad to have up, so it's kind of like 50-50, but depending on the time of the game.